here everybody this is erica the technology nerd likes to film stuff and before me i have the galaxy s7 and the s7 edge so let's unbox some stuff now i wasn't lucky enough to get early pre-order delivery things just didn't happen for me so i've got an interesting mishmash here we have the s7 this is an at&t variant that i picked up at best buy and then we have the t-mobile variant for the s7 edge I'm a little bit curious to see what the carrier experience is going to be like. I've got two SIM cards here. I kind of want to take their respective SIMs and switch them and kind of see what happens. I paid for these full out. I'm not expecting these to be unlocked, but it sure would be nice. And then alongside here, we've got two friends. This is the S6 and the S6 Edge. And this back camera glass is cracked. We will get into this later. I'll explain. Let's unbox. So starting with the S7 dual unboxing, 32 gigabyte. Well, they're all 32 gigabyte in the United States. This is the gold one. A lot of people are kind of losing their pants over this gold version of the phone. Well, the edge version. I didn't want something so flashy for my own personal phone. But I did get the flashy one here for at least one of the models. So here we have, it can wait. And already we are bombarded by AT&T insignia. Yay, or not so yay. So just pull these off. We're gonna have plastic everywhere. It's gonna be a huge mess. I know a lot of people like that swishy sound. Mildly satisfying. We're gonna power this one on. Let's see what else is in the zip box. So the SIM card is not yet inside this phone. Don't need that though, as I've got my own on the desk here. It looks like we have a SIM ejection tool and some pamphlets of things. We've got our charging brick, adaptive fast charging. We have another one of these cable things. I'm up to my nose in these cable things. I could probably climb out a window with as many as I have here. I thought that this was pretty cool, this USB connector. So I'd assume you could use this for USB OTG and also to help transfer information from another phone. We've got a pair of earphones in this boxy thingy. Not too much to look at, but who else here is kind of cringing at seeing this Best Buy label sticker right on top of this box? It's supposed to be a really pretty box and this just ruins it. Why Best Buy? Just why? So the S7 is indeed cool, but the one that everyone seems to be caring about and that is sold out online for Best Buy, I tried to get this through Best Buy initially, everyone loves the Edge. And this year I do too. Aw, oh, snap. I don't have something to cut this with. I lied. Random pair of scissors I found on the floor. Why they're on the floor, I don't know. I'm a little bit absent-minded. I don't know why I do certain things. So now... Opening the box. Please do not misplace this. I don't know where it went. I didn't see it. So here is the phone. And this year, I like that it's fully black and not this kind of a bluish color when you turn it. It is fully black onyx. I had a chance to play with these at Mobile World Congress and I could see which was my favorite color. That would have been the white one. Most definitely I liked that pearly looking white. You're not gonna get that in the United States. I'm gonna have to see if I can track one down unlocked because that was my absolute favorite. In terms of what's in the box, it's gonna be the same stuff that you saw earlier. I'm sure you guys have seen tons of unboxings. Let's try to not make such a huge mess. So lined up all together here, we have the Galaxy S6 and the Galaxy S7. And I really have liked the way that Samsung has changed just a little bit about the feel and it has made a world of difference. So these essentially look the same size to me. I really might not know which was what, except for the home button's different and that curve on the back. But obviously this is a wee bit different. Nice size difference here. All right, now I need to explain this elephant in the room here. So. This phone was just sitting on the desk, this desk that we have here, and I was pushing stuff aside like I was doing to clear some room and it fell and slid along the wall. And when I went to pick it up, it looked like this. This is very sad. 
For all I know, there might be some glass shards that are stuck inside of the optical image stabilization module and it may not work anymore. So I was very, very pleased to see that Samsung has made this not so protruding. It is quite a difference. I guess along the way down the wall, this is the first thing that hit something. And now this is just not as concerning. Plus you have this little bit of a bump here. I hope that this is what scratches and dings and not my camera glass. I doubt this is sapphire. This is probably Gorilla Glass of some kind. So let's go ahead and get these all powered up, turned on. All right, there we are. First thing that I notice, of course, is AT&T's copious crap. I hope you like that alliteration. I don't need to see DirecTV sitting here in my notification shade, seriously. And of course, these things you can't uninstall, you're gonna have to disable them. How about the T-Mobile experience? We've got T-Mobile applications on here as well. But nothing hanging out in the notification shade. And how about the back? This is Samsung S7 Edge. I don't see any T-Mobile insignia on this. I really don't like these sticker things. And it leaves residue. So that's nice. I like this much more than this terrible AT&T insignia. So already I think that T-Mobile is winning this unboxing experience. Now when I powered this on, it told me that I can't go any further until I put a SIM in it. So let's go ahead and put an AT&T SIM in it, see what happens. Network lock. This device can be remotely unlocked if eligible. I don't understand why it would not be eligible. I purchased this device. Please use the device unlock application to unlock the device. So let the record be shown that this is locked right out of the box, even though I paid full retail price for it. Hopefully T-Mobile will allow me to swiftly unlock it. I'm sure it's the same case here as well. Invalid SIM card. Yay! Screw you guys. Paying thousands of dollars in phones and having to deal with this. I have to say that I really am digging that Onyx black color over the gold one. With how they have it rounded here, this kind of just feels like a stone, like a pebble. It feels like something really organic to put in my pocket. I like that. And compared to last year, I really did not like how the S6 Edge felt. It didn't feel very comfortable in the hand for me. A lot of people railed on me for saying such a thing, but this is much, much better. This is just what I imagined it should have been initially. Also, happily, I finally had time to test out my Gear VR today for the very first time with my Galaxy S6. And unfortunately, I found out that my IPD, my interpupillary distance, is... I think it's a little bit too small for the range that this is one size fit all for. So unfortunately I cannot get the image to focus. No matter how much I change this wheel around, I can't get a proper focus. And yes, I removed all the plastic and everything. It's just that my pupils do not align to these pupils, if you will. So I can't take this image and focus it on my focal point and my retinas because, well, things just don't line up. So that's a real big bummer because I will never know the awesomeness of what this can offer. A lot of people really talk about this. I've seen on YouTube people do some modifications. I don't know if I'm gonna do any of that. It's just a wee bit unfortunate. And honestly, I'm pissed. There should be some IPD adjustment on this. Any cheap pair of binoculars will have such a thing. Why isn't that available on here? There are probably going to be a lot of really mad people. Samsung is really advertising this as a selling point with this phone. Get a free VR. Well, I'm sure many people are not going to be able to use it, unfortunately. Thanks, Oculus. Thanks, Samsung. Thanks a lot. At least this phone is gorgeous, though. And I really can't see at this point why someone would want to go for this unless they want to have the cheaper model. To be fair, last year I was all about this one. I was all about the S6. I did not like the edge. This display is pretty small and you have a lot of bent surface area here. So I thought that a lot of the image was distorted. Now you've got a wider 5.5 inch display and you have more area that is not bent. So I feel that I have more content and this little bit of a bend isn't as disturbing for me. So I'm going to review these guys side by side. I will use these both as my daily drivers for the next, I don't really know how long until I'm satisfied and I want to do a full in-depth review. 
So you guys, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Please leave your questions so that I know what you guys want to see. I know you've seen plenty of reviews already, but what in the very in-depth department do you want to know about these so that I could go and cover that for you? So this has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Really nice phones here. Let me know what you think and have a good night.